Hi friends, welcome back to Edipedia World and uh, this is the last lecture of the syllabus for class 10th. So I hope that you have enjoyed the whole series of lectures. Today we will see in the final lecture the uses of radioactive material, the sources of emission, the radioactive emission, what are the sources what are the harmful effects caused by radiation and finally we will conclude the chapter and the syllabus by seeing the safety precautions that needs to be put to place while handling radioactive materials. So let's start with our final lecture. Let us discuss the uses, sources and safety concerns with regarding radioactivity. To begin with, uh, what are the uses which radioactivity has been put to? Uh, we have discussed uh, in the previous lecture that at atoms uh, with uh, atomic number greater than 82 are normally radioactive. But they are not the only elements which are radioactive. There are elements with uh, atomic number less than 82 which can be radioactive and such elements are known as such isotopes of elements are known as radioisotopes okay radioisotopes an example of radioisotope would be carbon 14 or cobalt 16 so these are have Z much less than uh, 82 but they are radioactive fine so now broadly speaking what are the uses of radioisotope specifically and uh, radioactive elements in general they can broadly be classified as medical usage scientific usage and industrial usage in the medical industry the radioisotopes are used to treat cancer leukemia such things uh, by radiotherapy what happens is that the gamma radiation which is produced by the radioactivity is uh, targeted to the to treat the affected cells or tissues and that targeted approach leads to attacking and destroying of the corrupted tissues thereby it has fight, uh, fight the tumors in cancer also there are a lot of medical tests carried out which uses radioisotope as a tracing element they are known as tracers so these tracers are used to detect uh, brain tumors or blood clots that can be dangerous. Basically they are injected in the body and MRI or different uh, medical techniques are applied. These uh, radioisotopes that are injected highlight places where there is some problem. So that is an approach by which radioisotopes are used in medical applications. Also, the gamma rays emitted from the radioactivity is used for sterilizing purpose. This is a much more neater and faster way to sterilize than by using heat. So, the, in the medical industry, these gamma radiations are highly used for sterilization purposes. Next, what are the uses in the scientific area? One of the most fundamental use is that the radioactivity leads to the emission of alpha particles. These alpha particles are can be used as projectile, positively charged projectiles in nuclear reactions, carrying out nuclear reactions. So this can be tailored to control the speed by using uh, magnetic field or electric field and is used in the nuclear reaction studies. 
Also, radioactive tracers are used in agricultural science to study the growth of plants and uh, that gives a lot of useful information that is used to fine tune and make the processes in agricultural aspects much more better and robust. Finally, one of the most popular uses of radioactivity, which you might have already heard, is carbon dating. Carbon dating is the method used in order to estimate the age of much, much old things. And it uses the simple concept that uh, the ratio of carbon 14 to carbon 12 is constant in a living object. But as soon as uh, something dies, then carbon-14 intake ceases and the net amount of carbon-14 keeps on reducing. And by studying at any given moment what is the ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12, we can say that how long before has that particular plant fossil, uh, fossil or plant has died. Now finally, if we look into the industrial usage, in the industry, radioisotopes uh, such as uranium-235 or uranium-238 are used as fuel for the atomic reactors. Nuclear energy is generated and their radioactive materials are put to use. Also, the ionizing effect of radiations is used to create certain uh, signboards which are very effective and eye-catching and finally knowing the penetration power of beta radiations we can accurately measure the thickness of any paper or metallic sheet that we need so this by knowing the penetration power we can find out the thickness we can carry out the measurements of thickness of different material so these are some of the usage practical usage to which radioactivity is put to next let us see some of the sources of radiation harmful effects of radiation and safety precautions that needs to be taken care of next let us see what are the sources of radiation. The sources can be broadly classified into two categories. One are natural sources and uh, second is artificial sources. In the artificial sources we have artificial sources we have one what is known as radioactive fallout active fallout and the second is nuclear waste disposal nuclear waste disposal and in natural sources we have Cosmic background radiation, cosmic rays, and also some natural sources like K40 or carbon 14 or some radiation present in the body. Okay, so now let us discuss the sources in details. That what is radioactive fallout? Nowadays, a lot of energy is being produced using the nuclear sources of energy. Sometimes what happens is, unfortunately, there is an accident in the nuclear reactors and that can result in a radioactive radio radioactivity being spread in the neighboring area. And once such an accident occurs, the radiations stay in place for a very very long time 
So radioactive fallout is a uh, important and unfortunate source of radiation. Second is nuclear waste disposal. As I already mentioned that a uh, lot of energy nuclear is produced in the form of nuclear energy. This nuclear energy is produced using uh, the materials like uranium 235 or 238 or other radioactive material. And uh, once they produce energy, there is a nuclear waste. Okay? And then the activity of the fuel cells reduces, those fuel rods are rejected. But they are still active, that is they still have radioactivity in them. So care needs to be taken in order to dispose those radioactive wastes much more carefully as that can lead to a lot of nuclear radiation being generated and affecting the surrounding area. So that is another source of artificial nuclear radiation. In natural sources, the universe has a lot of cosmic rays going around which uh, is from nuclear radiations as well as other gamma radiation sources. Then there are natural potassium-40, calcium-14. Potassium-40 is found in, for example, banana. Carbon-14 is everywhere and is used for carbon dating. So these are natural sources which exist naturally in nature and we cannot do much about these things but the matter of fact is this natural sources the amount of radiation by this is much lower than uh, what a human body can absorb without any side effects so the natural sources are not much of concern the artificial sources of radiation needs to be taken care of because as we will see next the harm caused by nuclear radiations can be huge. So what are the harms that nuclear radiation can cause? Harms or harmful effects. One is if uh, there are broadly speaking three sectors in which the harmful effects can be divided. Short term, if you have been exposed to uh, radiations for a very short period but that actually affects your health, so after a short term you will recover. But during a short term you might have so throat, loss of hair, nausea, such kind of things. Then there can be long term, long -term effects if you are exposed to a lot of radiation, then that can have long term effects on the body. There might be uh, like hair losses, feeling of nausea for really really long time and it can take a, long, a lot of time for you to get back to complete health. Also long term exposure increases the risk of cancer. So that is a very bad harmful effect of radiation poisoning, let's say. Finally, genetic effects can be a result of uh, radiation. If a lot of radiation is being imparted on your body, then the DNA might break down and there might be genetic mutations inside your body which can be really harmful not just for you but for your coming generations too since genetic material is carried through generations. Okay, so uh, the care needs to be taken that uh, the exposure of radiations, radioactive uh, emissions is restricted for each human and in order to do that what is done is that safety precautions need to be taken and what are the important safety precautions safety precautions safety precautions are like if you in your work life or something if you need to work with radioactive materials you should use lead gloves you should use long handled lead uh, 
pliers to carry the material lead apron should be worn why lead because lead uh, restricts the radiations produced it has a very very thin layers of lead can uh, restrict the radiations also special care needs to be taken like if you are regularly exposed to radiations there should be a badge which you should wear always when you are in the radioactive zone says that the badge keeps monitoring how much radiation exposure you are having and there should be regular monitoring about the total exposure you have had and if the amount of radiation goes beyond a particular range then there should be steps in order to stop you from going further into the radiation zones okay and finally the radioactive substance should be kept in containers specially made containers which stop the radiations from being emitted these containers are mainly lead containers because they are very good at stopping the radiations so safety precautions broadly speaking lead aprons lead containers for the radioactive material safety limit monitoring by uh the badges by badge so this are the safety rules that should be followed by anyone handling radioactive material now what are some of the safety precautions that needs to be taken care in the industrial aspect like where uh, electricity is being developed uh, generated by nuclear materials so the nuclear reactors or power plants should be shielded with thick layers of lead and steel wall lead and steel walls N nuclear reactors should be housed in strong concrete structures airtight structures so that any physical disaster like earthquake fire and explosion the nuclear reactor can be robust against such natural attacks so strong air tight okay and finally there should be a very good cooling system why so because if there is overheating then that is a very bad sign and that might lead to accidents in the uh, nuclear reactors therefore the cooling system should be intact and in place finally the safety precaution the final aspect is that the disposal of the radioactive waste or the nuclear waste should be taken care of proper disposal of radioactive waste right the radioactive waste should be dis uh, disposed in such a way that they are not affect exposed to the air atmosphere they are not affecting the surrounding environment they do not affect the marine life you can't just dump it in the ocean and uh, relax since you are not going to be affected the marine life is going to be affected and that will lead to uh, effect throughout the uh, ecosystem okay so this uh, today's lecture gives you insight about different uses different sources of radiations and uh, the harmful effects and safety precautions that needs to be taken care of while handling radioactive materials so 
with this we come to a conclusion of the chapter thermionic emissions and radioactivity and this chapter was the last chapter in the syllabus for grade 10th physics it was a great opportunity to help you all give insight into the exciting world of physics and i hope you uh, have benefited from all the lectures that i have provided on behalf of edupedia and uh, i would like to thank edupedia for the opportunity and as well i would like to thank all the listeners and the learners to take your precious time out to understand the basic concepts of physics i hope that uh, with this understanding you do much better in your understanding of physics and in future you pursue physics as one of the basic subjects and maybe as a career too so with best wishes i would like to thank you again have a great day bye